My name is Clayton Hollister. I work for CNA Nominee Associates based in Virginia. Today I'd like to talk with you about designing network operation centers. This is part of our data center management series. Uh, we've designed network operation centers globally. Uh, we do quite a bit of work with IBM for their customers. And uh, today I'm hoping that uh, you'll consider hiring a designer to help you with your network operation center as you uh, grow your company. In life and in uh, the uh, design world, we have choices that we can either design something or we can adapt uh, to make something else work. And uh, if we go back to ancient Greece, a great example of this is Procrustes. He kept the house by the side of the road. He offered hospitality to passing strangers, invited them in, offered them a pleasant meal and uh, told them about his special bed that would fit anybody that laid down upon it. Uh, he told them their meal was free if they fit the bed exactly, otherwise they would have to pay for it. Uh, what he didn't volunteer was the method that the bed worked uh, by, and that was basically when you laid on it, if you were too short, Procrustes would put you on the rack and stretch you until you fit, or if your legs were too long, they would have uh, somebody chop off a portion of your legs. The option, of course, was to pay for the meal at a very high price, and uh, you know the travelers that had enough money stayed healthy. Thesis turned the tables on Procrustes later, fatally adjusting him to fit his own bed. The old space planning, uh, you know, for office space is often seen um, in knock design. It's not the right way to do things. Uh, of course, we would rather design the knock space to work as efficiently as possible, uh, keeping a lot of different design factors in mind. Uh, as you can see in the org chart, and if you, you know, imagine trying to work through a process that involves all of those different groups and finding that they're working from cubicles or office spaces scattered around the campus, uh, it can make it very difficult, and in the NOC, uh, we really can't afford to lose that much time trying to find the right person, and in some cases, you'll find that there are towers that are pretty much isolated from different groups for various reasons, and uh, that can make the process even slower. So, you know, the problem is that computers change the way we do business. It accelerated uh, how we can process information. And uh, if you can imagine being in that top uh, center black diamond and trying to work through a process where all of these different things have to be considered, the communications channels and things that go on uh, in the different groups and trying to get to the bottom right to get an output, uh, you know, there's a lot of things happening in today's processes and procedures. So, you know, the result is often, uh, you know, uh, you wind up uh, finding that people are working in a less than optimized space. And uh, today's knock is not office space. It has to be treated differently. It has a lot of different functions uh, that need to be considered on different levels. Uh, these photos are from the famous film Metropolis uh, from 1927. The reality is today, if you don't have a knock, you're really driving your business blindfolded. The solution is to make sure that the applications are always on. And that requires a faster direct line of communication. Uh, and you need an empowered cross-functional team of your most knowledgeable employees and they really need to be empowered and they need to be in one space where they can quickly communicate with each other, share ideas, uh, ask for decisions to be made, share information, uh, and share with their outbound groups from within this core. So today the NOC is a forum and uh, that's a place or opportunity for discussing a subject much like the ancient Grecian and Roman forums. Uh, a good knock design provides both a physical place and a logical opportunity to fix problems quickly using the most up-to-date information available. We have to look at things like the seating, the consoles, and the acoustics. A lot of times these spaces are uh, asked to work uh, or people in a knock environment uh, on 12-hour shifts, 7 by 24. 
and uh, you really don't want to have, for example, standard office seating in those environments. Standard office seating is designed for nine to five for one person. Uh, you know, that's how they're rated. Uh, we look for uh, seating systems that are task rated that will work in a seven by 24 environment. Uh, consoles, acoustics, lighting, there's hundreds of factors that go into these rooms as far as determining uh, the proper layout for the situation. And they're all somewhat different. Uh, logical design wise, uh, we got to look at where are we putting these people and look at the efficient workflow. Clear roles and responsibilities, well defined governance structures uh, have to be followed. So if you're on, for example, the ITIL, uh, change management, configuration management, all those different tasks have to be incorporated into the processes that are happening in the room. Uh, physical design and operations, uh, again, although uh, you know the uh, physical design needs to be done, if you don't really uh, look at the ergonomics, the, uh, the human uh, element of how they interact with their environment, um, and then also the operational systems. What are we asking them to do? What work is going to be performed? Uh, if you don't combine those physical and logical uh, parts, the result is often going to be cosmetic. So you really need to think about how you're going to uh, perform work in this environment and uh, continue to uh, modify and enhance the room systems to uh, provide the best opportunity uh, for those people. So design, uh, again, we, you know, designer has to consider hundreds of aspects you know, well beyond normal space planning. Typically your facilities group, if they haven't designed a knock, um, are going to take an approach that could be incorrect. Uh, things such as adding uh, active noise masking when really you need passive acoustic treatments. Um, and then, you know, we, we go back all the way through uh, the golden ratio, the Fibonacci spiral. We look at color empathy. We look at color balance and uh, try to uh, add that extra little bit that makes uh, the room feel comfortable, especially when you're working on a 12-hour shift. The space has to be uh, one of the primary tools that's being used, and that's the physical design of it. Uh, recent uh, UK studies have shown that a design-focused business outperforms the stock market by about 200%. So good design makes good economic sense, has a, a very good payoff, uh, return on investment, and good design has become a differentiator in the market. So uh, something to think about. Physical design, time and motion. Uh, you know, time and motion studies have been done for ages in production environments. Uh, however, when the uh, uh, efficiency experts came to uh, control rooms and knocks, they got very confused because their data was showing them that uh, one of the tasks that was communications between people. Uh, only happened about 10% of the time, but it actually was worth about 90% of the value of the work that was happening. In fact, the, uh, the work uh, that was done or the, the activity that happened the most often had the least significance, and that was taking a bathroom break. So you can imagine uh, how things can get turned around if you haven't taken the time to really study this. Physical design and training, uh, training and production times can be reduced significantly in an environment that is designed to reflect the operator's abilities and requirements. So uh, definitely it pays uh, big dividends to have uh, design uh, really done well uh, when you're building a new knock. A lot of questions that we get asked, uh, you know, things like, you know, what's the ROI? We can provide those numbers based on the environment. Uh, can I combine a knock and a sock? Um, security operation centers, uh, certainly a, a part of our uh, work that we do as well. Uh, should my knock use active sound masking? Uh, is it worth spending more for a display system with the thinnest lines or mullions between screens? Uh, 
what does the Imaging Science uh, Foundation recommend for the wall behind the flat screen displays? Uh, do I need 4K or even 8K technology? Uh, the screen technology resolutions have been increasing dramatically. And uh, should I stack the screens on the desk? If you already have a NOC, uh, we find that a lot of NOCs are older nowadays for larger companies um, and uh, even some of the midsize. Uh, but we offer a audit service for customers that have that older knock and they want to find out uh, or, you know, understand a roadmap that shows them how they can make it better, how they can bring it up to today's standards. Uh, we've done several of these uh, and we have a good database that we can compare uh, your knock in your industry uh, so we can help provide that roadmap so you can understand uh, where you may be falling short. Uh, and, you know, where there's some low-hanging fruit to really help uh, bring it up to speed. So let's talk about the ROI of design for the NOC. Eaton put out a study a couple of years ago that said the average cost of a one-hour planned outage was $700,000 U.S. Based on that one hour of outage, if we take the average design investment for our team to do both the logical and the physical design work of $100,000, it takes about six to eight weeks per geographic site. The planned benefit of that is typically between 15 and 40 percent per year, depending on the number of outages that you experience. Uh, if we take the one outage, take the minimum amount of benefit expected, 15%, and come out to 105000 that means that we've already paid back that investment for the design. That's a conservative estimate with one outage in a year. Estimated uh, knock lifespan is 20 years, so that comes out to $2.1 million that you get benefit from. Of course, this varies based on your cost of downtime and other factors. Different regions have lower power costs, etc. In most cases, our customers' ROI is reported to be much higher. So next steps, uh, hopefully our discussion today has uh, convinced you that uh, hiring a knock design specialist is a good idea. Um, we like to get in early on the project and start with conceptual plans. Uh, we do follow uh, standard architectural processes. So uh, once we finish our work, you can hand it off to an A&E firm and they can take it and do the design build. We don't sell anything. We don't sell consoles. We don't sell displays. So we're not interested in selling you as much of something as we can. We would rather provide you with uh, what we think is the best uh, potential design for a project. Uh, a lot of times we'll offer up three different companies that make a particular item that you could use in the facility. If you want, we can take it to a schematic design level or even architectural programming and planning, and we can work with uh, your team as the uh, knock is built out so that if some technical questions come up uh, we can uh, be available by phone or email or do site visits to help uh, make sure things got installed right uh, write test plans evaluate vendors help with writing rfps and whatnot so if you are considering a knock uh, please contact me i love to discuss ideas for these uh, knock projects and uh, there's my email so again, thank you for your time.